Okay? So what's going to happen? It's going to start bending like that. You see? It's going to start bending into the board. And by the time its velocity is like this, what's the force going to be? Okay? So V crossed into B like this. Okay? And then when it goes like, it eventually starts going like this. When it goes like this, V crossed into B down. Okay? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to go like that. By the time it reaches over here, you, it's going to look like this. The V is going to be into the board, right? You have to visualize three-dimensional. It goes up, then it goes into the board. So when, it, when it's on the highest, most, most path, the V is going to be into the board, right? And the B is like this. So now it, the force is going to be what? So this is good chance to practice the right hand rule again. Into the board B, the force is going to be down. OK, so now it's like this. The force is down, so it goes like that. And then by the time it ends up back there, the V is going down, right? So it's like this here. So by the time it's down back here, now the V is down. No, let's do it like this. And then now I'm going to do V crossed into B, right? V crossed into B, it's going to, the force is going to be out of the board. And out of the board, that's the sign for it. So, but now the, for, the, the charge is back here, right? And the force is out of the board, so it's this way. So you can see what's happening. It's going in a circle, you see? By the time the charge is down here, the, the charge is coming out of the board, right? The charge is this way, and the B is this way. So the force is uh, V crossed into B up. No, that's the force. So that's, it makes a complete circle, basically. You see, the force is constantly, uh, the force is constantly changing direction. Up here, it's down. Up here, it's up. So it's going in a circle. The reason it's going in a circle is that the force is always perpendicular to the V and the B. So the force is not actually pushing the object or making it change its speed. The force has the characteristic of a centripetal force. Remember, centripetal force is always perpendicular to the V. Okay? So, what would happen if the charge was negative? Let's say you started out with a negative Q, and then you started with a negative Q, negative charges like to move towards higher potential. So, what you would do is you would make this zero volts and you would make that something volts. You would make it accelerate towards the higher potential. And now it would come out with some V final. And then now it's going. And now the negative charge enters the magnetic field. What's going to happen? OK, the only difference is going to be notice F equals Q V cross B. So if the charge is negative, now the force is just reverses direction. So when the charge is going up, okay, let me just write this simple. The charge is going up, and the B is to the right. But the force is, uh, the charge is negative, right? So the V is up. Now do the right hand rule. V crossing the B, but reverse the direction of the thumb. Okay, so V crossing the B, reverse the direction of the thumb, it's out. So the force is out. And this one, the force is going to be uh, when the, so it's going to go like this, basically. Uh, it was going up like this. The force is out this time. So it's going to go like that towards you, right? It's going to go out. By the time the V is here, it's going to be going out of the board. 
So the first thing will happen, it'll be V out of the board for the negative charge. And now you do V crossed into B. V crossed into B, you get up, but you reverse direction. You see? V crossed into B, and then reverse direction forces down. So the charge is going to do this, go like that. And then when it gets there, the force is down. And then when it gets there, the force should be in. So when you have the, like this, the, char the velocity is down. So uh, V crossed into B, the force is out, but reverse direction. So this one switches. And then it goes into the board. Then V crossed into B is down. By your reverse direction, you have F is out. OK? So what ends up happening, it has the same path except for it comes out of the board and into the board, back into the board, and it goes in a circle like this. The positive charge goes like this. OK, so the positive charge comes up, goes like that. Negative charge comes up, goes like that, and then that's it. It just, as long as you keep the magnetic field the same, you can make that go around forever. You will not lose velocity, OK? One of the fun things you can do is constantly increase the magnetic field. What, what would happen if you increase the magnetic field strength, OK? It might start spiraling in, right? Because the stronger the magnetic field, it's going to make it twist. And then so you could make it go like that, go like that, go like that, go like that, and then crash into itself or something. The, velocity, the radius uh, until the, the magnetic field is infinitely strong, it's going to have a very small radius, you know. Or if you want to do the opposite, you can make the magnetic field get weaker, and it'll go like this, it'll go like this, it'll go like that. The radius will get bigger, right, if it, the magnetic field get, is getting weaker. So let's derive the formula or the equation for the radius of the circular orbit. F equals Q V crossed into B. But in this case, it's a 90 degree angle, right? So it's just going to be uh, the magnitude of F is going to be Q V B. And that's going to equal M V squared over R from circular motion, right? And then the V and the one of the V's cancels. The radius equals M V over Q B. OK? So let's just, uh, and it makes sense. Look, if we look at the equation, the stronger the magnetic field, what should happen? The smaller the radius. So as I was mentioning, if you want to make the radius smaller, make the B stronger. The stronger the charge, the smaller the radius. And that makes sense, too. The, the more charge, the more force it feels. Therefore, it has a smaller radius. But as far as the M, what would happen? The smaller the V, the smaller the M, the, big, uh, the smaller the R. So you got to do the, if you want a small R, you got to do the opposite for the M and the V. The V needs to be really small, so it shouldn't be going too fast. And the M needs to be uh, really small in order for the R to be small, OK? If the, if the M is big, on the other hand, if the M is big and the V is big, what's going to happen? If it's a heavier particle and it's going much faster, it's going to be harder for the magnetic field to make it twist, right? So it's going to have a bigger radius. So that makes sense. So the formula makes sense in all of its uh, parts. OK, let's now, just for the sake of interest, calculate uh, using the magnetic field of the Earth. I want to calculate if a proton or electron enters our magnetic field of our Earth. What is its uh, radius of its orbit that it's going to have? Let's say it enters perpendicular to the magnetic field of the Earth. 